to ask you a couple of questions from the audience. Okay, from okay. the audience. Yeah. All right. I'm going to I'm going to ask you the typical because you're a girl question. Okay. And we're going to work our way up to some like hardcore car guy questions. Um, what does color? This is coming from what's this gentleman's name? Uh, I, I, I'm afraid to pronounce your name, sir, because I probably will uh, screw it up. Inadi Pasholi. Inadi Pasholi. Okay. He has two very good questions. Okay. Um, what does color say about you? The color choice of a car. What does it say about you? I think color choice can say a lot of things about you. Uh, I really like white cars. Really? I think it's just clean. You have a nice contrast with no usually the. No wonder like that Porsche. I love that. Yeah, yeah no wonder I awesome. went right right for the yeah. spider. It's got a nice natural contrast yeah. with with the windows and the other elements yeah. of the vehicle. You know, you think about red. That's very energetic color. Yeah. I had a a 370 Nismo in red oh, wow. with the red interior, yeah. and I found myself wearing more red when I had it. It was really weird. This like subconscious thing gotcha. happening. Yeah. But I, I think it shows your personality. Our, the BMW I have is like a dark blue. Yeah. So it's Back not to the convenient. blue scene, you and I. Yeah. Well, you know, blue and green used to be the colors that you could never resell. If you're talking about That's what we were talking true. about earlier, you never wanted to buy a blue car or a green car. But now blue is back, and it's really big. You know, Derek and I, uh, we, we hang out. And we've talked about this off camera. I asked him flat out, why don't you put, like, blue interiors and, like, more red interiors, that kind of stuff. And he's like, because people don't buy it. They don't. They just won't buy it. There was a, when we got our, our BMW, there was someone who had ordered one that was red and ordered a red interior, and they wouldn't take delivery of it. Really? Because you can't match red and red. It doesn't really work if it's, le if it's leather and blue and blue. It's really hard to I think match that's those. That's too much. The, it's too much. I got, a, I got a car coming and booked like in, in May that's, it's, it's, it's called a Gate Gray. Okay. But it has a red interior. It's killer. Looking. That's your Italian coming out, Agate, right? Well, I'm Greek, but Greek. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> I just like saying fun, funny words. I just thought, yeah. yeah I heard that's Storico Marchio <laughs> Maranello. I like stuff talking other languages, especially cursing people out in other languages, like we like the, the crew and I did this last <laughs> week. Yeah, we were at YouTube Space LA, and they made us do these uh, vlogs. Uh huh. So there's this other guy, Jake, who's a friend of mine. And he does everything. He, he's a Hispanic uh, vlog. Uh -huh. So uh, we taught everybody how to curse in Spanish. Oh, yeah. that's great. That will that's never a make great it to this skill. channel. I can guarantee you that. That's a great. Uh, I don't know. You could get a whole new audience. Oh, it would that. be an interesting audience. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So color, I think, just says. I think it's just another way to extend your personality. For me, I like to wear a lot of colors. Yeah. I don't. I usually, if there's a black dress and a, a dress that's in another color, I usually. Yeah. Pick the other one because okay. it's not conventional. I understand. I have a different answer to this. Okay. I would like to answer this question because I felt this was an incredibly good question. And yeah. I think my answer is different. Okay. Have you have you known me? I'm a bit of a detail-oriented guy. You? Yeah. No. Not at all. I think not the color. Like I don't give a damn what color you put on the metal. Okay. Or what color you put on the fabric or okay. the trim. What I care about and what tells me a lot about you is how you pair things, how you bring out the details of your car. Yeah. And it tells me if you are a detail-oriented person, it tells yeah. me if you are the kind of person that is, you know, go-getter, or you're just like, you know what, eh, I'll take this one. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I agree completely. Yeah, and it's it, also... How you can see how people take care. Is the car clean? You know, you oh, buy a black huge, car, yeah. you better keep it clean. You gotta keep it, you know, it's washed hard, and it's and hard shiny. work to keep a black car clean. It's hard work. Very hard work. Definitely. So it's to me it's all about the details. Like okay. this this Agate gray car I've got coming, uh -huh. it's got red seat belts, red seat it's a stick. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, it's like they're not getting it back. I is can that, guarantee you that. Is that from this area? Is that from the, uh so we're gonna get it in LA. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or like we just had this one car last weekend. It's a blue exterior, once again, back to blue. It had a saddle interior, 
blue piping, blue stitching, oh, yeah. but then underneath the headrest, it had like this little black swath of leather to pick up the tonneau cover over the roof. Wow. Incredible. That's amazing. Oh, Santa That's Maria, amazing. Madre de Dios. Um, now I want to ask you another question. Okay. This is the same guy. Yeah. Same guy. Same guy. Good questions. And I don't understand this question, so okay. you're smarter than me, Oh. Okay. so I'm going to ask you. All right. What, and, I, and this is also from Inadi Pacioli, and what is, what do you think of the controversial design of the Mustang and the IRS and the Mustang? And I don't quite understand that. I don't know if I understand that either. Yeah, because I don't think, my answer to you, my friend, is I don't think it's a controversial design. I think they did a great job with that car. And I've been very vocal. I'm not a Ford guy, and I really think they did a good job with it. Yeah, I think they did a great job, too. Um, I don't know. Maybe it was controversial in other areas, and maybe not in America. OK. Could, on a global scale, it could maybe there was in some Nadia, more controversy. I would love to hear more about your thought yeah, on this. Get, yeah, yeah let us uh, Hit us up on a social media or something like that, yeah. and we'll, we'll answer more on this one. But I don't think it's a, a, a controversial design. I think they knocked it out of the park. Here, I've only heard praise. Oh, no, absolutely. They got a ton of it's accolades. It's just for enough it. history, but it's more forward thinking, and that's why I think Murray did a beautiful job with that. And then, as far as the answer to your IRS question, they had to. It's just, yeah. they just they had to. Yeah, and the only other thing I can think of is, you know, since they came out with the, I think it was, you know, in the 2000s with the throwback kind of nose on yeah. the Mustang, I think some people are. Com maybe have complained that it's not a completely different car, but you know, with a car like Mustang, it's totally changing and so it's not recognizable. Yeah. It's, there's no need to do that. Okay. You gotta have a little heritage there. I and agree. I totally agree. It doesn't agree have to be all throwback, like, you know, we got the Camaros, the Mustangs, and everything throwback, yeah. which is fine for a period, but maybe that's what, what he was talking about. I'm going to pose the question. Remember the question I asked Derek about the ten cars ten years ago, the the, the the preview of cars ten years ago for now, and then what's it going to be like in ten years? Are there still going to be crazy cars? What do you think? May I think maybe the outside of the cars is not going to be as different as the interior of the cars. You're thinking about new technologies that are coming into, you know, started on the S class technologies that are on the S class. 10 years ago are on a Kia today yeah. and at a $20,000 price point. You yeah. know, it's it's just amazing how these new technologies come down in cost and are ubiquitous across brands and, and nameplates. So I think uh, in the next 10 years, you're gonna, I think we'll have more focus. Remember the Discovery concept last year from Land Rover, oh, they yeah, opened yeah. up the doors and it's just this oh, beautiful, cool. like yeah. futuristic, design on the inside. I think maybe we'll see more of that, especially if autonomous driving becomes a reality on, yeah. a, on a larger scale. Uh, having the interior of the car is just completely different function, yeah. if that's the case. And, you know, the, the only thing that, you know, they have to keep in mind is that element of distraction if you are driving the car, of course. But, but do you still see car like they did the McLaren uh, 570 at the show? We haven't even discussed the McLaren 570. I know. But, Beautiful. Uh, yeah, but here it's we're amazing. talking about storied names coming back, yeah. Honda Type R's, yeah. a new cab, big cab. It's a really cool show, so much so we it's forgot about stuff. the McLaren. How could you forget about Excuse that? Excuse us. We, we should be fired. <laughs> um, you think, are you saying you're... Will there still be McLarens? I think there will always like, be exotic cars that, that cater to, you know, that drive for yeah. real raw performance. I don't think that's going anywhere. Um, it's nice to see some elements like the Spider having a manual transmission, whereas a lot of manufacturers are phasing out manual yeah. transmissions. So, you know, picking a car and saying, well, we're just going to do it like this. Yeah. I love that. Like Vish. Yeah. We're just doing it like a CVT. Yeah. He doesn't care what people think. Man. Yeah. 
I'm going to beat him at the submission on that, though. I'm going to make I'm okay. going to change his mind. <laughs> You're probably not alone. He's, he's <laughs> yeah. heard it, I'm sure. Oh, funny. I've already read some of the people. There's a bunch of people watching that uh -huh. episode we put up today. I read some of the comments before I came on. Everyone's like, give me something other than the CVT. Okay. Yeah. But okay. then again, these, you know, these are the enthusiasts that are watching these this These are the stuff. enthusiasts, not the, you know, middle America. Uh, so you do, yeah, this is a question from me to you. Forget about okay. the audience for a minute. Okay. Do you think the manual of the Spider is a Mia Culpa on the GT3911? I guess. I mean, the price difference, though. I mean, I just don't see that that being. If oh, that's I the agree. car you wanted, yeah. why would you go get the Boxster? I think it's just more talking to the, the enthusiast yeah. community, saying, hi, you know, if we, well, we can do the, manuals. And the thing is, is that the, the Boxster, when it came out, was not... It was not a Porsche. It was not a cool car to have. Yeah. So now the tune has changed, even among the enthusiasts and the Porsche purists. Well, especially with this GT4 that came out with. Yeah. Oh my God. You know, so it's it's great to see. Yeah. But I think maybe they found an opportunity to yeah. push Boxster in that direction a little bit more. That's you know that's interesting. Spider. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Uh, it's funny, they, so you know me, I'm a Lotus guy. Yeah. And they came out with a, they announced the 400 Evora. And I was very excited about it. And then, like, Porsche just comes over and completely craps in their doorstep and said, oh, by the way, we got this GT4 thing. <laughs> and for a guy like me, it's like, well, I'm going to go talk to Porsche real quick. Yeah. I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back. So what's the old saying? One cannot live on bread alone, but one cannot live on cars alone. Here we are in the greatest city in the world, and we've talked about pizza from this city. Remember Joe's Pizza, Bleecker, and Carline with Fiat? Well, now we're coming for good old New York Deli. And not just any New York Deli, Katz's New York Deli. And you come here for one thing, pastrami on rye. Sir, what do you want? I'll take a pastrami on rye, a large fry, coleslaw, and a Dr. Brown's black cherry, please. All we're going to give you is pastrami on rye. You'll like it. I'll take it. Thank you. And normally, I'm a roast beef guy, but the pastrami here, as the kids say today, the bomb. But uh, let's just say we got a cornucopia here. Um, we've got the rye, because you got to get the rye. we got some green beans, because you're going to be healthy. Um, we have got the special Katz's Deli mustard. Uh, what else? We got? Oh, you can't miss this. You got the matzo ball soup. Kind of like your old Jewish grandmother used to say, eat your soup, it'll make you healthy. Um, I'm not Jewish, and my grandmother never said that, but that's my best impression. And then while we're talking about some stuff over here, we got Manischewitz. This is in advance of Pesach. Um, let's just say I never acquired a taste for this. But we do like this. Dr. Brown's Black Cherry Cream Soda and Celery. This is not an advertisement for Dr. Brown's, but if you are from New York, you know this stuff here. And speaking from New York, this is Brandon. Hey. This whole thing couldn't have come together without Brandon and Billy behind the camera. These guys, they're awesome. They actually have a dinosaur, really. They really have a dinosaur. And this guy also is an aficionado for old subway cars. That's how I got to know him. Um, you know what, speaking of aficionado stuff, we have dessert. Black Forest chocolate cake, also the bomb, and then my favorite, cheesecake. Which one do you want? Black Forest. Good, then I'm going to take, oh, excuse me. Billy likes the pecan pie. Pecan pie, as they say when Harry met Sally. That took place here in Katz's Deli. That scene with the whole orgasm, that was here. Anyway, back to cars. Uh, we forgot three cars. What were the other we're getting three? old, man. We're forgetting a lot. The Jaguar, the XF. I didn't they, even get, I didn't drove, get to see it. So I was talking with Ian yesterday. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, I was like, Ian, man, you're on a roll. And he's like, yeah, thanks for work. I'm like, no, not you. You're PR <laughs> people, man. They're driving cars over rivers. That's pretty awesome. It makes your work like, OK, the car was cool, yeah. too, but they drove it over a river. <laughs> did you see that? I did not see that. And not that. just any river, the River Thames. Wow, really? Yeah. Could you imagine what went into driving a car over two cables over the river of one of the biggest cities in the world and, like, the number two financial center of our I think universe? that is literally, maybe literally, pulling out all the stops. I, I, done. <laughs> There's nowhere to go from here. You can't go. You yeah. can't top that. It was well, amazing. last year they had, you know, Land Rover had their event on the, you know, the SS... Um, Oh, yeah, the Intrepid. Yeah, yeah, the yeah keep, Intrepid down here. Yeah. And in L.A., when they do the FCAD Coupe, they drove, so 
We're based at the YouTube Space LA. Across the street, there is a, uh, it all used to be the Hughes aircraft facility. So one of the hangars is still there. Yeah. And so they drove an F-type coupe 90 miles an hour inside of a building. So think oh of how gosh. big this building is <laughs> to drive a car. I don't care how fast it is. It's going 90 miles an hour when it hits you. Yeah. And yet they top that. I drive it over the river. They got some creative folks at the helm. And look definitely. at this. We're and not talking about the car. We're talking about the stunt. I know, but you know, it gets you talking about it gets the you brand. Talking. It does. Okay. And there's a car we're forgetting, which we do have to talk about, is the Focus yes. RS. Focus RS. You know, I think. Well, when they announced that initially, you know, everybody, my whole feed, every yeah. social media feed, Blue I was off. like, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. I mean, it was everywhere, almost like the GT, but yeah, yeah. on a different level of enthousi you know, enthusiast. And, you know, I'm, as a former SI owner, I think that a car like, like the RS is great. It's going to sell. Oh, they're going to sell it when they can build. It's, it's going to be great. Oh, you can have absolutely. that car in fun colors. It's useful. Oh, you could, you know, you don't have to be young to drive it. It's yeah. a fun car, kind of, you know, some of these other hot hatches out there. I mean, it's the ultimate hot hatch, I think, right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a Ford guy, and I would actually buy that. I yeah. totally would buy one of those. I drove the ST, um, the, the outgoing model. The Focus model. or the Fiesta? The Focus ST. Focus. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I have many friends that own an ST Fiesta. It's like yeah, it's, it's, well, uh, and that thing, yeah, yeah, being so so much smaller and everything. It's, it's yeah, a buddy of mine just got rid of a, a Honda Element and got a Fiesta, a Fiesta ST. That's a little bit more exciting of a drive. Well, he's got a Corvette as well. Okay. So he's making the Fiesta his 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 like daily driver. Daily driver, and the Corvette sits in the garage. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Did he uh, buy the Corvette in a weird color from like 1977 or anything? No, it's black. Is okay. it black? I think it's black. I think it's black. You yeah. can't go wrong. With no, black. you can't go wrong. So uh, I think if we have forgotten something. Did we forget anything else? Okay, if we forgot something, let us know in the comments <laughs> below or via social media. Yeah. And we'll come back to you guys and answer all the questions on those. But I do want to close out. I feel like I'm offering like, you know how we fly a lot and you get like the elite level I'm giving two of our viewers like elite level status by letting wow. them have the last, the last word two, here. The last two words. Yeah. So once again, Cody from California. Right, Cody, Cody from California. And Amro from Saudi Arabia. Oh, nice. Do you know we're huge in Saudi Arabia? Are you? Yes. That's amazing. Yes. Amro runs the fan, the Motoman fan club Hi, over in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> we have to go over there and check them out. Yeah, definitely. Yes. So, and he's actually, Amro's a Kia guy. Okay. He drives a Kia, but he loves he loves these things. So yeah. this is, he's very excited about this. Great. Um, I love it. So uh, Amro asked a very specific question. He goes, did I get anything from Bob and Dave? Well, I spoke to Bob Boniface. Oh, Bob Boniface, man. He's the coolest man. On the Almost yeah. cooler than Dave. Dave. So Dave Leone is the chief engineer at uh -huh. Talent. We love him. Like, yeah. He's super cool. Like, I think one day he just got pissed off about the Germans beating him. He's like, you know what? I'm going to make cars go and kick their ass. Yeah. And that's why you have the CTSV now. Yes. Uh, because of one man. But then Bob Boniface, who, who runs all the interior design, and interior design, uh, exterior design, he, he's got a cool car collection. Okay. The man just got a Delta Integrale Lancia. Oh, wow. Yeah, he just got into the 25 years, so he got, he's what? like an ex-rally driver's car, so it's uh -huh. got this great pedigree. So, yes, we are going, he and I are I going to drive the car. Car with a pedigree, so, you can't go wrong with can't. that. And it's, and it's a Lancia <laughs> rally car. Yeah. I mean... That's Forget about the, the, the Focus uh, RS. Well, you want this. This is definitely. why the Focus RS exists, this Lancia, which is a shame that uh, Chrysler is just killing Lancia. It's just a shame. Anyway, I'm digressing at this point. Um, That's a whole other segment. So, yeah. So, Amra, well, basically, here's the story. I spoke to Bob and I spoke to Dave. And I can't say anything specific, but let's just say that there is an ever-expanding, growing world here in Catalonia. I think that's Definitely. the best way to put okay. it. Okay, I like that. There's an ever-expanding. The possibilities of your imagination are en endless. Yeah. Literally endless. And Johan's the kind of guy who came in here oh, and, yeah. he, and he just, he, he, he went to GM and said, we're doing this and we're doing it this way or we're doing it no way. Yeah. So Go take Johan. that as putting everybody Team Johan. on notice. Team Johan, yeah. yeah. Team Johan, exactly. We're on Team Johan. Yeah, definitely. Melanie, how can everybody find you? 
You can find me on Twitter at bcarchic, B-E-C-A-R-C-H-I-C. bcarchic.com is the website, Facebook, and Instagram as well. So love to. I actually have some Instagram fans uh, from Saudi Arabia. So look at you. So you're huge on. in Saudi Arabia as well. Well, not as not as popular as you, of yeah. course. But. Well, I'm sure Amro follow her. Yeah. If please. you don't follow her. No more questions are answered for you. Got it? That's the deal. I like that. Muscle people in to following me. That's good. Oh, that's, I like it. That's how you grow, man. <laughs> yeah, you got to hustle. That's how it happens around here. That's, <laughs> that's how I true. work my way up to a chair next to a Cadillac. <laughs> that's right. <Yeah. laughs> With some flowers. Okay. I have a gift for you. You have a gift for I have for a me. gift. Uh-oh. Brandon, will you get off your phone and give us the gift? <laughs> this kid, you know what? It's he like, works too hard. He's on the phone way too much. He works hard. Okay. Are you oh, ready for the gift? Oh, is this from last night? Yes. Thank you, Brandon. This is Brandon. Oh, thank you. The lovely and not so gracious Brandon. Oh, he's great. Okay. So we had dinner last night. Yes. At I was one very, of I needed New York this last unique, night. Yeah, you needed it last night. I did. I'm not guaranteeing how fresh it is right now. Okay. But because I'm a giver. Thank you. That's I brought love. you I appreciate that. your very own pastrami sandwich. Ooh. As a thank you for being on our thank show. Thank you. Well, I will enjoy this, definitely. We'll have thank to have you. you back. But thank you guys for joining us uh, from New York City, my hometown. Yeah. So here's the script. Click here to subscribe. Click here to watch one of our 350 other episodes. And most importantly, share us with your friends. You're already wasting half your life on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Moto Man TV, all one word. I don't care who you share us with. Share us with your enemies. Just give the gift of Moto Man.